So for all three of these methods, we're going to use the same equation. And that's the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction will equal the second refractive index, in this case perspex, divided by the first refractive index. Now in this case, the first refractive index is air, and air has a refractive index of about one. Because of this, we can essentially cancel out the n1 because we're dividing by one. So what we can say is the angle of incidence, or the sine of the angle of incidence, divided by the sine of the angle of refraction will equal the refractive index of the perspex. So we've got our ray box set up, and we've got our perspex at an angle to the ray. And you can see the ray just emerging there from the perspex. I'm going to draw two lines along the perspex in case I knock it, so I can put it back as precisely as possible. And then what I'm going to do is mark three crosses along the ray before it enters the perspex, and three crosses where it leaves the perspex. You can see there we've definitely got some refraction when I remove the block. And now with a straight edge, I'm just using the flat side of my uh, protractor, I'm going to draw a line of best fit for those points, stopping at the boundary of the perspex. And I'm going to do the same for the ray once it leaves the perspex, stopping at the boundary of that perspex again. And now what I can do is between those two points, I can join those two points together, and I've got the path of the ray inside of the perspex. Now we're not too bothered about the ray at the bottom, we're only interested in the first boundary between the air and the perspex. Next we're going to, you can add some arrows there like I've done, next what we're going to do is draw our normal. So line your protractor up right in the middle where the ray enters the perspex, mark 90 degrees you can mark another 90 degrees below, I'm just doing this for quickness, and we're going to draw our normal and extend it down into the perspex block. That's our normal there. And our angle of incidence is going to be the angle between the incident rate and the normal, and our angle of refraction is going to be between the normal and the ray that is refracted as well. So now we're going to measure those two angles. Again, we need to be very precise with this. Take your time. It's very important that we get this correct. Our first angle is the angle of incidence. That's 37 degrees. Again, I'm going to measure the refracted angle, or the angle of refraction, I should say. Again, take your time with that, and that's going to be 24 degrees. And we're going to use the equation we've got here. Sine i over sine r will give us our refractive index of the perspex. So... In this case, we're going to have sine of 37 divided by sine of 24 will give us our refractive index for the perspex. So we'll grab a calculator, make sure it's set into degrees, not radians. And when we put those numbers in, put those values in, we get a value of 1.4 eight to two decimal places. That's okay, it's not brilliant. There are more precise ways of doing this and we're gonna look at the following two methods that give you a much more precise value for that refractive index. For both of these methods, I need to take as many readings as I possibly can. So in this case, I'm going to vary the angle of incidence and repeat the experiment four more times for four more different angles of incidence. I will trace the ray just like before I will draw my normal just like before. And what I'm going to do now is measure those angles of incidence, measure those angles of refraction. And with the other one, I'm going to put them into a table of results. So I'll have five different readings. So I've got my five different readings up here. And I've just done it in increasing order from smallest angle of incidence to largest angle of incidence. I've found the sign of the angles of incidence and the angles of refraction. I've just rounded them there to two decimal places. And I've found the refractive index for both all five values or all five readings. And then I've taken an average. Now my average is 1.44. So a little bit more precise than the original method with just one value, one data point. But there's an even more precise way of doing this with a graph. So if we graph our data points, if we graph, uh, if we plot the angle of incidence on the y-axis, 
and the angle of refraction on the x-axis, what we should find is that we get a, a, a linear proportionality. They should be directly proportional to each other, and we should get a straight line of best fit going through the origin. Now, the gradient of this graph is 1.43 is equal to the refractive index because the gradient of a graph is change in height divided by change in length. Well, in this case, that's sine i divided by sine r. So we found a more precise way of graphing uh, or finding a result for our refractive index. This also helps if we have any outliers, any data points that are really out there. This disregards them a little bit more than just taking an average. Anyway, so that was three ways to find the refractive index. One really simple way, one more complicated way, and then one a little bit more complicated. I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much.